As widely expected, the leaders of Korea and Japan will meet next week for the first time since they took office alongside their U.S. counterpart on the sidelines of the nuclear security summit in The Hague. But will the much anticipated encounter between President Park and Prime Minister Abe be enough to improve strained ties? Our presidential office correspondent Chu Sun says not necessarily. Friday's announcement comes after President Park recently welcomed Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's reaffirmation of Japan's past apology for military sexual enslavement during World War II. The two leaders haven't officially met for summit talks since both of them took office more than a year ago. Bilateral ties have been strained, especially after Abe's visit late last year to a war shrine that honors several Class A war criminals. It's widely viewed that Korea caved into U.S. pressure to come to the three-way talks. Washington wants strong trilateral ties with both its Northeast Asian allies to ensure regional stability and cope with potential security threats from China. That pressure was likely intensified ahead of U.S. President Barack Obama's visits to Seoul and Tokyo next month. While some experts say the upcoming dialogue could be used to break the impasse between Seoul and Tokyo, others say it would be far-fetched to expect an immediate thawing of relations. What Korea wants from Japan is an acknowledgement of the illegality of its past colonial rule, an apology from the government, the cabinet, and rightful compensation, as well as restoring the reputation of the victims. It's also doubtful whether Tokyo will not just speak, but act sincerely about its past atrocities. The Abe cabinet still intends to review the 1993 apology for coercing women into sexual slavery and will likely make further claims to Korea's Tokdo Island in school text next month. In any case, the main agenda at next week's three-way summit are slated to be ways to curb North Korea's nuclear program and seeking a resolution to the crisis in Ukraine. Choi Yu-sun, Arirang News.